the last software development question. Um, this is a voting system where they vote with A, B, C or D. And you can probably tell as that's coming that there's then going to be input validation. So, at some point you're going to have to validate this. Now, that could be one of your processes. So we'll ask for process or we could validate the letter the process that I'd written down was add up the votes for each candidate. That would be a process as well. Thinking about what does this program have to do? People must enter A, B, C or D to cast their vote. The most suitable data type is a character. It says most. So string works but it's not the most suitable. So it's not going to get the mark. It's character because it's only one. And then using the design technique of your choice, design a solution that will allow only these values to be entered. So asking the user to enter their votes, first of all, outside the loop. Now that's actually kind of optional. It's something that we would have to do in Python, but it's not too important in the design technique. What matters here is First of all, I've got a while loop. So, input validation, and I've said this before, is always going to be a while loop for you. There's another type of conditional loop called until, but we don't do that in Python, so you're always going to think of this as a while. So you're going to get a mark for that being a while. It's never an if or using an else for input validation. Um, inside it, if the condition is wrong, we're going to show an error message and ask them to re-enter. So, it's like a common pattern. It's going to be while something, show an error message, and enter again. If that's not something that you know, then you need to learn this because you can't make it up on the spot. You're not going to be able to work that out. So, I mean, that's like 5% of the paper for knowing input validation. So, the condition. Different ways that we could write the condition here. It could be what we've said kind of colloquially in everyday language we would say it's not A, B, C or D. Now for a design technique you were going to get away with that if you'd said not A, B, C or D but you couldn't write the program that way if you were going to do it as code. I think the way that would make most sense for you guys to be thinking of this because if you were then going to implement it was you're saying it's not equal to A and it's not equal to B, and it's not equal to C, and it's not equal to D. Therefore, it must be an extra letter that's not going to be valid. So we show the error message, and we ask them to re-enter. Um, last couple of things for software development. So, following code displays a number of votes for each candidate. Not actually all that important to see what's going on there, because it says before the code is run, it must be translated, complete the table to show the type of translator. So the only types of translator we know are a compiler and an interpreter. This is quite a, a kind of simple compiler and interpreter question, because it's purely factual. So the compiler is going to be translated once, or the compiler is going to be used to translate the code once, I should say, to convert it to machine code. The interpreter translated four times, so... every time the line is run because an interpreter isn't just every time that the program runs but every time every individual line is translated one at a time so you're going to translate um, that line four times because it's in a loop I've just had to break this up there because I accidentally closed the tab so after voting's closed, the candidates, three candidates received the same number of votes. They're stored in a data structure called winners. So, data structure called winners. So that must be an array. Because there are three of them. 
the app uses predefined function, so should be thinking right predefined functions we've got length, random and round to pick one candidate. So to pick one that must be random. Using the program language of your choice, write code that will display the name of the winning candidate. So we've got an array of names called winners. The first one would be winners zero. And then we would have winners one, winners two. So if we want to get one of these at random, if I generate a random number that goes in there, Which is zero, one, or two, or zero to two. So then, randant zero comma two, and that's where I'm getting this. So the winning number is just a variable that I've made up here. That's stored in whatever my random number is. So my random number is zero, one, or two. So that's let's say in print winners zero or winners one or winners two, and that's going to print one of them. So it's three marks, two lines of code.